I was, uh, I don't know how old I was because uh, it's just a few years ago. Um, <laughs> as a little boy, I was watching this uh, videotape, Beyond Belief, Beyond Belief. And uh, some elderly people walked into my home and they said, Shut that thing up, that's rock music, that's a devil. I said, I know. I was just looking at how people are deceived. And I turned it off. And when they went, I turned it on and learned it by heart. And I went to my school and I began singing, Beyond Belief, Beyond Belief. And I said to my friends, you know, you guys have got nothing compared to what Christians have. We've got the best music. And stuff like that. Well... I did feel guilty about what I did, but uh, those days, you know, in a Pentecostal home out in South India, you don't have too many choices. Only God understands you. <sighs> Devil anyway doesn't. And then uh, it took a few more years when English service, we started, we started from zero. There was nobody, just me. But there's one decision I decided uh, I took that time, and that was uh, we will not be struck. We will not allow ourselves to be caught up with unnecessary teachings that we'll allow anything which is acceptable and which is promoted by the Bible and good music was the creation of God and uh, volume levels are decided by the sound man I don't think we need a committee to discuss that so as I thought about it and uh, and then more music began to come in and those, those songs were so beautiful uh, when I say doxology or theology. They were beautiful in the content on how they carried the gospel. And the greatest surprise was for me that in that video there was a, a time called the altar call where young people were invited to Jesus. And I tell you, that was amazing. And I remember watching that video and thinking in my heart, Oh God, whoever that guy is, he's so lucky out there. I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to see these guys closer. I think God heard my prayers then. Because I got very close to that chap today. And all of us are very close to him because of Jesus our Lord who brought him here. And I want you all to give John W. Skills, the evangelist, music evangelist from America, a warm welcome as he comes up. Let's all stand up and give him, come on, everybody, stand up and give him a loud welcome as he takes up. Thank you so much. I am totally blessed. It is, a, please, everybody sit down, sit down, please. Let's be comfortable today because I've got some stuff to say. I am absolutely excited about being here because I have traveled all the way around the world to see more of my brothers and sisters. We are family. I'm so excited to see the numbers that are here because who says the Christian faith is getting smaller? It's said all over the world, but I'm telling you, every time I go to a different country, I just see the numbers growing and growing and growing. In other words, the world doesn't want the truth. That's okay. We know the truth. We see the numbers growing in mighty ways. And why? Because Jesus Christ is Lord. No other. Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, it took me a long time to realize that. I was 30 when I finally became a Christian, and a lot went on before that time. I was into music my whole life. I've been, although I graduated as a civil engineer from college, the day I took my last final exam, I went into music. Because before that, I'd been in music, and I promised my dad that I would get a degree. Many times I said, oh, Dad, I, I, I don't want a degree. I want to be a musician. I want to be a rock star. I actually use those words. I want to be a rock star. And he says, you can be a rock star all you want, but you're going to get a degree first. I said, okay, because my father and my mother were very good people, and they had blessed me so much, 
and all they asked was that degree, and I got it, and I thanked them for it later. Because for a while, about seven years, I was in a secular band, and you'll see what I'm talking about between secular and Christian. I was in a secular band that actually did well. We actually did our first record on our own, and it went gold. Back then, that was a big deal. But because we had done it ourselves, it was truly amazing. We got to choose our label. In other words, as time went on, I started out with the musician's dream. The musician's dream. All of a sudden, I am playing in front of so many people. So many people. And in fact, to a point where I was doing it so often, it got boring. It got boring. Which will happen. You may have an amazing dream, but I'll tell you what, if it has nothing to do with Christ, you'd be surprised how quickly it gets boring. So what was the next step? Well, I started drinking, because that's what you did in secular rock. There was no water back then. I mean, it wasn't cool to drink water. It was cool to drink beer. So I drank beer. And I drank more and more and more, and my body got used to it, and I could drink a case of beer a day and actually live. But then that got boring. And then the big one. For me, cocaine was my downfall. The minute I took my first line, I was hooked. And for the next two and a half years in my music career, music came in second, my family came in second, my health came in second. What was first was cocaine. And there was a certain period in there where I got, got so good at this because I would drink beer to get down, I'd do coke to get up, and there was a certain high that was amazing. I will tell you later what that was. I finally got so bad that the band fired me. I mean, these guys were doing the same thing, but apparently I was doing it a lot worse. And fired me at the beginning of 1980. And I went on a six-month binge with the excuse that I was going to start another band. A six-month binge. And what that means is I was drunk or high 24 hours, about 24 hours a day for six months. At the end of that six-month period, I woke up one morning, actually the day after my anniversary, and realized I had passed out before I was going to my anniversary party. And my wife finally just let me pass out on the couch and didn't try to get me to my bed because I had passed out before, but she was always trying to hide it from the kids. And this time she just said, okay, enough is enough. I woke up and my one-year-old son is looking at me. I'm seeing a haze, my head is pounding. But I looked at my son and he's got a look on his face of, who are you? It was so, it was like, I just felt like he was going, dad, you don't look like dad. And that very minute, a voice says to me, you know, John, you're worth more dead than alive. And I totally agreed. I totally agreed. Do you see the route that's going on here? See what's going on? The enemy for six months, actually for years, but that last six months with the final claw. But that same six month period, my wife gets saved. She becomes a Christian. Do you realize how disgusting that is to me? I'm a rock star. I don't want a Christian in my house. She keeps trying to tell me about Jesus. I don't want to hear about Jesus. I'm too cool for Jesus. I'm a rock star. I mean, face it. I enjoy Coke. I, I want to party all day long. How, how dare she tries to steal away my nosebleeds and, and my hangovers. How dare. But she kept every once in a while during that, that six-month period, she'd come home from church just so happy, so joyous. So, and it got to a point where, you know, I'm in, I'm in a very depressed mood at this moment. So we've got a very happy lady and a very angry man. And every once in a while I'd say, what world are you living in? She goes, I'm glad you ask. And she tried to tell me about the Lord. I said, no, 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 no. Well, that day, as I'm sitting in my chair, looking at my kids, I made a decision. It was going to be the end of my life. I knew I was going to use a gun because I didn't want my kids to see the mess. 
So I sat there determining what kind of pills I could get that would be as quick and, and painless as possible. And I can remember, as if it was yesterday, I can remember sitting and thinking, okay, I think I can get this. I, uh, my wife taps me on the shoulder and says, now remember, John, you promised you'd come and talk to my pastor. I says, when? Last night when you were drunk. <laughs> How do you argue? But I did. I said, okay, fine. Okay, if, if I said that, that's fine. But I went there with the attitude of it's not going to change a thing. I already knew what I was going to do. I made the plan. I am the, the, the king of my castle. So I went to the church with an attitude. Actually, it wasn't a church. It was a pastor's house. But I didn't realize the pastor's house had the Holy Spirit. I went in with an attitude. I walked out with Christ. When I was there, the pastor was very, very adamant about it. Because I, again, I walked in with a, well, you know, you know Jesus? Yeah, I'm an American. I go to church twice a year. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't make him happy at all. You don't know Jesus. You don't know the Jesus that loves you. You don't know the Jesus that has a plan for your life. You don't know the Jesus that's here right now tonight. You don't know the Jesus that knows exactly what you're thinking. Next thing I know, I'm sitting down going, what is going on? Comes up, you want to know Jesus? It was the best head shake I ever made. Walked out that night, guys, with Jesus Christ walking beside me from now on. Praise God. Think about it. It sometimes, it sometimes fascinates me to, to see folks that aren't part of the body of Christ how they can choose to face this world, the world's problems, without him. We have the opportunity to have the God of the universe standing behind us, often standing before us, taking the onslaughts, and people question it? Oh my gosh. It's like, I want to offer you everything. Oh no, you don't. No, I don't want that everything stuff. I just want part way. I just want, so I want to suffer. Oh my gosh. We scratch our heads and go, can't you see? And the truth is, no, they can't. Because they're being blinded by the world, by the enemy. So we can't, when we try to tell our friends about Christ, when we try to say, you need to come to church, you need to understand what kind of faith we have, uh, we, we shouldn't be surprised that, that they're going to say, no, no, I don't want that, I don't want that. Because the world is constantly trying, 24 hours a day, to shove it down their throats that we aren't, we don't know what we are. We're fanatics. We are fanatics. We love Jesus. What's wrong with us? Could it be that we know the truth? I think so. I think so. Well, guys, for the next five years, for the next five years, when I became a Christian, I was doing a band. That was my excuse for that six-month binge. I had a band. It was going to be called the Johnny Band, and I was going to show my old band that I didn't need them. When I became a Christian, I actually went out for a few times playing secular music, and I want you to know the enemy didn't want to let go of me because the temptations were more at that time than any other time in, in my musical career. Did I fall? Yes, I did. I was a baby Christian. But I had a church who loved me, cared for me, would bring me in, sort of, you know, clean the wounds, and pray for me. And in a very short time, all of a sudden, I just said, you know what, I can't, I can't take this music anymore. And you've got to understand, that was my life. What came first in everything was music. Second to my family, second to my health, everything, except cocaine. But to me, cocaine was music at this time. So when I gave it up, it was a whole new world. I gave it to God. I said, Lord, I, I don't know what else to do. I, I can't do this. And my wife basically said, you give up music or me. That helped a little too. <laughs> in fact, she comes in at perfect times. I mean, it's uh, uh, always, still does. But it was a whole new life. And I, I started all over. That's when my dad's insistence on engineering came in very handy. 
God bless him. But for two years, guys, it took me two years to really cleanse, cleanse my body from all the garbage that I had done. And one day I woke up going, man, I feel great. What, what is this? It feels great. And I realized, remember that, that high that I would get between beer and cocaine that was that perfect high? It was sobriety. Sobriety, what God wants to give me for free. The enemy was charging me big bucks, as usual. Counterfeit, counterfeit, counterfeit. I'm so disgusted at how Satan plays games with us all day long. And our friends. It was just another teaching to me. Thank you, Father. Okay, I see it. I see it. Many other lessons came through. For instance, because I had been so disgusting in the secular system as a, quote, rocker, I was typical rock and roll. Secular rock and roll, I could, I could spew more dirty words in one sentence than most people can do in a week. And was proud of it because I was a rocker. Yeah. So I just determined, I determined that God can't use me. I know God's plan. And one day, many people say, you should sing, you, you should sing music for, for God. No, no. No, 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 I'm too dirty. Can't do that. No way God can use me. And one day, and I, 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 I wish I could say exactly the time or whatever, but there was a time when God says, John, exactly what sin is it that you've done that's greater than the blood of Jesus Christ? It, that was an eye-opener, guys. Remember, there's not one sin any of us can ever do that is greater than the blood of God. Uh, praise God. As time went on, and I realized that, well, maybe God could use me. About that time, Bob Hartman called me. Bob Hartman is the founder of Petra, an amazing writer, an amazing guitar player, and I, by this time, was a big fan of Petra's. Petra was before me. They had a great singer before me, and, I, and when Bob called me, I thought he was kidding. In fact, I thought it was somebody playing a joke on me. And I realized it was Bob Hartman. I said, well, what about the other singer? What about Greg? And he goes, oh, just trust me. It's God's will that we separate. I said, okay. And he says, would you consider singing? I said, yeah, let's do it right now. Let's do it. He goes, well, don't you think you should pray about it? Yeah, I guess so. But I looked at my wife, who, remember, has said, it's either music or me before. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, there's no way. My wife, there's no way she's going to let me sing. And I see her in the, in the kitchen. Apparently, she knew what Bob was going to ask. And she is dancing and praising God and going, praise God, this is all. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going, well, maybe I'm going to get to sing after all. Six months later, we did pray about it, and we knew. We knew. God had prepared us before, and that's another long story. Six months later, I'm singing in Brisbane, Australia, the first time in seven, seven years, seven years sober. It was freaky. Blew out my throat after three songs because I was so excited that I got a second chance. And praise God, the guys in Petra were so giving and so understanding that they put up with me for almost, oh, three to six months I, you never knew if I was going to blow my throat out because I just wanted to do it so bad. And so finally we, we settled down and for the next 20 years I have seen brothers and sisters all over the world. And I want to tell you right now, I want to encourage you, we are not a dying breed. We are a growing family and we need to stand strong. I have to selfishly say that I get more blessed than you guys being able to travel all over because I get to see new family members every day. Every day. It is such a blessing. It's an encouragement, encouragement for me to come to a new country. And I, oh, I've been here before, but not, not here at a church where I see, when I was walking in, I'm seeing prayer going on. What a concept. I'm hearing great music that you're not afraid to sing. Thanks, guys. Seriously, it sounds great. Thank you. 
And you guys are accepting it. Thank you, Pastor, for making this a young church. I think that's so important. So important. God is, Jesus Christ is Lord. He has a plan for each one of us. We need to join together. We need to tell our friends that are going, oh, Christian, oh, oh. We need to tell them, just come. Come and, and see what it's about. See how the Lord can, can change your life. See how the Lord comes into your heart. The Holy Spirit comes in your heart. Oh, my gosh, it's totally different. Totally different. But, guys, I do thank you for your time today. I, I hope that I didn't bore you. I hope that you understand my heart saying, my testimony, in, in Revelations 12, 11, it says, by his blood and by our testimony. He shed his blood for us. All I can do is testify what he's done to me personally, as we all can. Every one of us has a story. Just happens to be mine has a little bit with rock. Makes me a little weird. But today, I love you and I thank you so much for your time. And I hope that you come and, and join with us tonight. Now, please understand, it's not a church service, but it is dedicated to Jesus Christ in a very unusual way. I think you'll enjoy it very much. God bless you guys. Thank you very much. It's fantastic. Thank you. I just feel that as uh, evangelist John shared his life testimony and spoke to us, we are as a church blessed, but I feel in my heart maybe some of you today want to make a decision. Maybe you are on drugs. Maybe you are planning about experimenting with it. Maybe you're not sure about your decision for Jesus. Maybe you're coming to church, but you're not sure about heaven. Maybe you're thinking that music is greater than God. I don't know. You could be anywhere in that spectrum. But today, I think it's a good opportunity for you to receive Christ the way evangelist John did it. From the heights of his career, he came to a greater height on the cross, at the cross in Jesus. Would you like today to give your life to Jesus. And I tell you one thing, when you give your life to Jesus, it's actually no big deal because you're actually giving your life to someone called Jesus, the Son of God, who already gave his life for you. And you're just returning your life to him. And when he took that bread and broke it, it multiplied. And it was a miracle. When he takes you, he may break some of your characters. He may change some things, but it will be blessed. It will be multiplied. You will never be who you were. God has a plan for you. I want to pray with you. Every eyes closed, every head's bowed for a minute. How many of you young people? I tell you, God loves you the way you are, but he wants to be closer to you. But today, you want to give your life to Jesus. Testimony. His story spoke so clearly to you by the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus wants to change you. He wants you to give up some things in life. It may not be drugs. It could be something else. But today you want to begin following Jesus in a brand new way. You want to receive him as your Lord. You want to move one step closer to him. Such people. Wherever you are seated, I'm going to request you to raise your hand as we pray for you. Jesus was not ashamed to die on the cross in public light. Why should you be ashamed to make your decision? Wherever you are, lift that hand up. Wow, that's fantastic. I see hands going up all over the place. That's fantastic. Wherever you are, would you like to stand for a minute? Every eyes closed, every heads bow down. Just the people who raised your hands, stand up wherever you are. Stand up wherever you are. You're making a decision that you will never be the same again. You're making a decision that by God's grace, you're going to start a new life. I see, I don't know how many, is it a more than a hundred young people, old people standing up. I want you to know from today, a new history begins in your life. Wherever you're standing, just repeat this prayer after me. With confidence, with faith, say this, Lord Jesus, today I receive you as my Lord, as my Savior. Please forgive me of all my past sins. From today, I want to live as your child. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
strengthen me to walk according to the Bible. I receive Jesus as my Lord. I believe you died on the cross to carry my sin. After you were buried, you rose from the dead and you're alive. I believe you're the son of God. In Jesus' name, I rebuke, I command every evil to get out of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. While you're standing, I request the church to give them a warm welcome into the kingdom of God. You're welcome. You're welcome. Please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah.